Hello and welcome everyone to the Tower Project. Today I've got a very special battle for you on Field Friday. It's a 2v2 field battle. Venice and France taking on Spain and Sicily. I've got some very skilled players here in this battle today for you. France is commanded by Rush Alt Caro, also known as Bismarck. A very veteran, very skilled player. Venice, his ally commanded by Spartan Coop, another very good uh, old player. Across the field, and the Spanish-Sicilian alliance, Spain commanded by Arm Branca Leone, probably one of the best field battle players out there. Uh, Bronk, as we call them, has been around forever. One of the best, uh, if not perhaps even uh, among the best of uh, field battle players. And his ally is Arm Waffles, again, another one of uh, the best field battle players out there. So some very skilled players, a lot of talent coming to the field for you guys. And this is promising to be a very good showdown between these two alliances for you guys today. So the battle is going to start off all, um, almost immediately with a Spanish cavalry charge here into the Venetian crossbowmen, which is going to attempt to be countered here by Spartan Coop with some nice hosp uh, Knights Hospitaller countering the Conquistors, but these Conquistors are going to get another cycle charge into the Pavis Crossbowmen, just trying to soften them up to give his crossbowmen the edge in the skirmish battle. Here the French-Sicilian fight uh, is going much more statically, where the Aventuros are trading very evenly with the Pavis Crossbowmen. Uh, I do believe in a one-on-one -on -one with no other factors, I do think the Aventuros will win, the Aventurier uh, will win in a one-on-one -on -one fight. They are a lot more expensive. But I think they have a slightly higher missile attack. Uh, they do not have the shield, but they have much higher armor. And again, uh, like I was talking about in the armor and uh, shields video, even though the Pavis crossbowmen have this animation where the shield on their back turns around and then they fire, it doesn't matter where the shield looks vis uh, visibly on the Pavis crossbowmen. It's only ever going to give them frontal protection. So even though they do this uh, bending around thing, the shield doesn't magically start to protect their back. It's still only protecting their front. The advantage that they get from that animation, though, is that they kind of crouch down so they get a smaller hitbox. So there is an advantage to it. It's just not the one you think of. Uh, so now that the Spanish and Venetian cab fight has kind of boiled down, uh, their fight has started to uh, kind of become more regularized where uh, into, a, a form, into a firm skirmish phase. Uh, where Pavis Crossbowmen are trading off with other Pavis Crossbowmen. And that's the thing about field battles is generally in rest, uh, uh, unless someone is rushing, uh, the game is, is very layered. Uh, you're almost always going to have a distinguished skirmish phase, and then there's going to be cav play on the flanks or a cav charge to the center, and then there's going to be the big infantry battle, and then the mopping up. Uh, so field battles are generally very layered. Uh, same thing with siege battles. You always have a bombardment phase and then an advance and then a push. Uh, which is kind of nice about Medieval 2 battles that uh, some of the newer games have kind of started to lack. Because the battles are so fast, you don't end up with these distinguished phases like you get in Medieval 2. I mean, you can see a a as we're playing through the battle here, there's a distinguished skirmish phase where you have crossbowmen trading off with other crossbowmen, skirmish units trading off with other skirmish units, cav play going around trying to get an advantage. It's all about positioning. It's all about maneuvering. And yet you can still you still feel like there's an actual battle process going on, which is something that I, I feel is pretty unique to Medieval 2 as opposed to some of the newer Total War games, especially like, like Warhammer, <laughs> where basically it's just rush to the center and and, you know, whoever is faster clicking with the mouse uh, generally ends up winning. And we might just give it a little bit of a fast forward here just to get through some of the skirmish phase. Uh, and while we're taking this little bit of a pause, you can see cavalry uh, positioning itself over on the far left. And we can take a very brief look at the armies here. Although the Sicilian, armies, Sicilian army over here is starting to advance. And we have counter cavalry charges by the French. Cavalry going to meet here in the center on a beautiful charge. Chivalric knights fighting chivalric knights. And noble knights fighting Norman knights. 
And so now, the although the, the Norman army has kind of done a delayed charge, it's, it's charged its cavalry forward, but its infantry is still in the back, whereas France is advancing as a unified, coherent unit. Which is generally a much better idea. Same thing going on on the Venetian-Spanish flank, where the conquistadors are starting to engage with a lot of the Knights Hospitaller. Uh, interesting that Venice chose to bring a lot of the Crusader-type knights, as opposed to uh, any Stratiots to give them an edge uh, speed-wise over the Spanish cavalry. Because the Conquistors will trade very effectively uh, with, these, with these Crusading Knights. And we can see the, the Frankish and Sicilian battle really starting to uh, devolve here into a big mosh pit. You're going to see the infantry lines begin to clash here. One very interesting thing, both of these armies bringing a lot of pikemen. And they are going to do a perfect demonstration of everything I talked about. In my pike video. Um, you can see these pikemen starting to get the pikes down. Moving forward onto the dismounted broken lances of Sicily there. And same deal over here. More pikemen moving forward. And he's doing a beautiful job. Uh, Bismarck here. Mixing his infantry and pikes together. And same deal over here with Waffles. Infantry and pikes together. Uh, very reminiscent of kind of a pike and shot formation, which is really cool. Uh, but you're going to see France begin to advance here into the Norman line and use that beautiful pike strategy to keep them with their pikes down. And he is going to do an excellent job against this Norman line. The Spanish and Venetians have still not properly engaged. The skirmish phase is still going on there. Uh, but Broncaglione doing an excellent job with these spear militias, screening out the Venetian cavalry, and these guys are kind of going to get suicide charged into the Spanish line. Still not a proper engagement, though. <laughs> Look at how close these two lines are. They haven't quite sent it off, and now the Norman line is advancing. And they're going to advance into the awaiting pikes of the French. And we can watch this beautiful battle play out here. I'll zoom in for you guys. <laughs> and they're just staring each other down. Nobody wanting to uh, be the first to advance with their pikemen. But you can see here a big mistake by Waffles. He had his men form that defensive formation just for a moment. Where the pikes knelt down as if they were in guard mode. And now the superior quality of the French pikemen is going to give him a big advantage fighting these pike militia. And you can see both, and now you can see a lot of the pike militia, uh, they're still holding their spears, but they are getting totally butchered. And a perfect play out of properly utilizing pikemen here uh, on screen for you guys. That's one of the big reasons I wanted to show this. Now over on this side, the French pikemen have dropped their swords, and the Pike Militia are doing a great job. So there are some trade-offs uh, going on the battle here. But where the Pikemen utilized the Pike strategy uh, that I talked about in my video, keeping the Pikes down, using the backspace attack and keeping guard mode off, you can see they, they made just a perfect line of these dead Pike Militia. And so that, that, again, is another great demonstration of the power of the pike tactic there. Now, these pike militia are in guard mode. And you can see they're not advancing, and they're not... Only this back line here is kind of thrusting with their pikes, but this front line here is not. And so there's very little damage output uh, when you go into guard mode. And with pike militia, your damage output is already very limited because of the low attack stat. Now the Venetian and Spanish clash has properly happened over here. Uh, more pike militia, Venetian heavy infantry engaging with conquistadors and dismounted knights. A uh, very typical Venice and Spanish engagement. It does appear both sides have decent cavalry numbers left. You can see the aftermath of the, uh, of the skirmish on the battlefield here. Both sides losing a lot of crossbowmen in that skirmish. Very even trade, relatively speaking. 
France starting to push through the Sicilian line, starting to get some backline penetration onto the Sicilians. Now you can see those Pike Militia have gotten up from holding that kneeling position, but this is the big difference. This is why I say keep guard mode off. As you can see, they have guard mode on. Look, none of them are actually thrusting with their pikes. And so they're not really killing any of these chivalric knights. And the chivalric knights are able to kind of slowly beat around the flank here. This is why I say you have to keep guard mode off. Otherwise, you're not going to actually kill anybody. Now, it can be effective to just hold these guys off. But these pike militia could be doing a number on these chivalric knights if they were properly utilizing that strategy and keeping guard mode off. Anyway, enough focusing on the pikes here. Let's get zoomed into some action down here at the front lines. Pike militia, uh, this time, uh, some of them are facing the wrong way, but the ones that are facing the right way doing some good work against these conquistadors, backed up by Venetian heavy infantry, even a couple of knights in the mix. And a nice charge from the Venetian bodyguard. Uh, Spartan Quap doing an excellent job here, fighting, again, one of the best field battle players in the game bar none with arm uh, bronchileone and waffles getting a nice rear charge into those dismounted feudal knights and they are wavering are they going to hold it looks like they are going to stabilize but sicily has has basically buckled at this point they've got a couple of units left waffles is is starting to get uh, buckled by bismarck's line here those french pikemen really doing their work against the pike militia of sicily but you can you can see it, it France is it, it certainly was not a a mop uh, a, a washover battle with France and Sicily Sicily inflicting very heavy casualties on the French and Sicily still not done at this point uh, lots of troops still on the field at Sicily uh, with Sicily getting some good rear charges on this pocket and now the Venetian pocket is starting to break the one big Achilles heel of the Venetian faction is their morale those venetian infantry do not have the best morale in the game that is for sure uh, they only have a morale of five and compare it and you could compare that to the nine of dismounted feudal knights or the 11 of dismounted conquistadors so a very large morale discrepancy between the byzantine the uh, the venetian heavy infantry and some of the spanish dismounted infantry but of course, if you can keep the, the Venetian infantry fighting, they will pretty much decimate anything. Uh, but the weak morale is, is certainly their Achilles heel. So the last of the Sicilian cavalry here getting some nice charges in on the Aventurier of France. And some French troops over here fighting to the death. Spanish general taking him out. Although Venice still has some units fighting, it is not very many. So it looks like on this side, Spain is, is starting to mop up Venice. And France is starting to mop up Sicily, which is only giving us an amazing foreshadow of the last battle that is to come here between France and, and Spain. I was about to say France and Venice, but they're already allies. Uh, the, the foreboding battle that is to come between France and Spain. And again, the Sicilian bodyguard doing everything they can to try to take down some of these French numbers. Beautiful rear charge there on this large French pocket. Uh, but France has another pocket of troops over here. Venice slowly getting mopped up by Spain. And the first general to fall is the French general. Which is not going to be a good omen to the French and Venetian alliance. Uh, Venice is pretty much out of the game, but he does have his general left. France has all the troops left for their alliance, but his general is gone, which could be disastrous for their team morale. Another good charge there by the Spanish cavalry. They are taking some crossbow fire, though. And so the, the cavalry of the Spanish and Sicilian alliance is, is starting to wreak havoc on the battlefield here. It is going to be a big struggle to see if the Venetian and French alliance can withstand the cavalry onslaught. A few last Venetian heavy infantry heroic stand here against these feudal knights and there goes the venetian general with the charge but they get countercharged by the spanish general and the venetian general goes down both the french and venetian generals are down and now venice is off the field and so now it is france 
against both the remnants of Sicily and Spain. But even though France lost their general, they do have a sizable pocket of troops left. And all the troops you have left have pretty good morale. Uh, the, the standard French pikemen have much better morale than pike militia, even though they don't cost that much more. Aventurier, great morale. Dismounted Chivalric Knights, great morale. And so France may be able to weather the storm of the Spanish and Norman cavalry that is left, even though he himself does not have any cavalry. But if you've ever played Medieval 2, you know just how devastating cavalry can be in field battles. And so Sicily, three generals bodyguard left on the field. That is it, and the general being one of them. Spain, a couple Pavis crossbowmen, a single dismounted feudal knight, or two of them actually, not a single one. There are two of them. And a fairly healthy unit of General's Bodyguard, still 11 men in that unit. And this is going to be a powerhouse, a tank, at the end of this battle. And now we kind of have another lull in the fight, another skirmish phase. And now that the two armies have engaged the remnants have set up another skirmish phase before this battle goes out and it is one that france is almost certain to win here with the superior archer number and quality with those aventurier we do have some combat going on uh, there was a brave charge by the single french aventurier uh, but of course we all know that frenchmen are not the bravest around and so he did not successfully rout these pavis crossbowmen uh, but ran away as brave sir robin did uh, from the spanish pavis crossbowmen And now we just have the cavalry circling the French position. The Spanish general and the Sicilian general. And it is going to come down to how well those cavalry can be used against these French troops. But a lot of pikemen still on the field. And those pikemen can do a number against those cavalry. And there's still some aventurier on the field who can take down those cavalry as well. So both sides still with enough tools to take this down. And you can see just how close this battle is coming to. Uh, currently, 94% of the Allies killed the 98% of the, the Spanish and Sicilian alliance. But what they have left are both of their generals and some generals' bodyguards. So this is really going to come down to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. A true nail-biter of a battle, uh, just like the Siege of Ages that we had last week. Always try to bring you the best content I can for Field Battle Fridays and Siege Battle Saturdays. And I promise tomorrow... The next Siege that is going to come out, you guys are really going to love. Uh, it does indeed rival the Siege of Ages. So be sure to stay tuned tomorrow uh, for the next Saturday Siege Battle as this field battle begins to wrap itself up. We are eventually going to see the charge of the Spanish and Sicilian Cavalry. And we are going to see if the French infantry can withstand it or if they're going to, in the spirit of their true French heritage, run away and be defeated. And here it comes. The French cavalry coming in. He's going he is not going to charge there, but he does lose one to the French pikemen. And the French general stuck here on the pikes. That is not the French general, the Spanish general stuck on the pikes. That is not good. And so the Spanish general does not get a proper charge, and now he is surrounded by the French troops. He's going to try to escape and get out of there. And it looks like he's going to successfully do it. A nice charge. By the Sicilian cavalry taking out the Aventurier. But the pikemen get the Sicilian general. And now the Sicilian army is off the field. Another charge by the Spanish general into the pikemen. But the Sicilian allies are gone. He's lost the majority of his bodyguard. He's down to only five men. And another charge back into the front of pikemen. Getting a beautiful charge killing a bunch of Frenchmen. But the Spanish general goes down. The French morale holds, and the Spanish army is defeated. And there you can see a nice victory by the forces of Bismarck and Spartan Coop, and a very close, very well fought battle by Arm Waffles and Arm Branca Leone. Uh, down to just a few, just a handful of Frenchmen left on the field. Beautiful last stand by Bismarck. Wonderful cab play by Waffles and Bronk. A great skirmishing play by Spartan Coop. All around brilliantly fought battle. Very well played to all players. Very close. 
very nail biter of a battle. Hope you guys enjoyed this field battle. I'll be coming, like I said, at you guys tomorrow with Siege Saturday. Very exciting Siege battle coming out tomorrow for you guys. Can't wait for it. And stay tuned at the Tower Project. I'll see you guys next time.